No lack destroys the power of the devil. And God can then say, I've destroyed you, devil, with nothing. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today. This message, like so many other messages, needs to begin here. They begin here. Begin where? Begin with the Holy Ghost, who's God in the earth today. See, so oftentimes the Bible calls it the beginning. Back in the beginning, Peter said, when they received the Holy Ghost. That was the beginning of the church when when the Holy Ghost came he's God in the earth so this message say this message. this message this message like so many others has to begin here with the acknowledgement that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today can you understand that mm -hmm. so Acts chapter 13 now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord, and what? Fasted. And fasted. Is that is fasting part of the New Testament? Yes. Oh, man. Don't you wish it wasn't sometimes? I wish it was part of the Old Testament. Well, it is the Old and the New, right? And fasted. Who said something? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost said, separate me. The Holy Ghost, and all the people would say, oh, the Holy Ghost doesn't speak of himself. Well, here he is speaking of himself. He's saying, separate me. Right? Mm -hmm. Who said this? The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. The Holy Ghost. Who called them? The Who's God in the earth today? The Holy Ghost. So he's speaking of himself he's saying things he's calling people and when they verse 3 and when they had fasted and prayed look they continued fasting oh I don't like the sound of that they continued fasting when they'd fasted and prayed they laid their hands on them and sent them away so they being sent forth by who the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost departed who are they sent forth by Holy Ghost who are they called by who specifically said I have called them the Holy Ghost according to your Bible right well he's God in the earth today he's the one calling people a lot of people have a problem with that I don't know why but he's the one calling people he's the one anointing people most people would understand that right the Holy Ghost is the one anointing people and who are we serving in the earth then who are we following Holy Ghost he's God in the earth today Galatians chapter 3 verse 2 this only would I learn of you received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit where did you begin in the Spirit, in the Spirit with the Spirit he's God in the earth today do you understand this it's pretty basic to me it's not basic to a lot of people they're like oh I'm, I haven't I haven't understood it all yet but I'm working on it good keep working on it that's good right so I worship you Holy Ghost using the words I worship you Holy Ghost you know that sounds real strange to a lot of people they say oh what do you do oh I worship the Holy Ghost and they go wait a minute well what is this strange doctrine well is he God he is God should you worship God as a believer shouldn't you worship God oh yeah I worship God well who is he who's the Living God who's the Bible specifically says the Living God is he's the Holy Ghost so you use those words I worship you Holy Ghost are you here yeah. using those words is knowing God in a way and opens the door to knowing God in a way that other people can't what do you mean other people can't other people that don't or won't can't and I've told you before there's things in there that just won't happen for people they won't understand it they won't see it until they begin worshiping the Holy Ghost and when they begin worshiping the Holy Ghost things will open up to them is that good news yeah I'm preaching the good news so worshiping the Holy Ghost is knowing God and enables you to know God in a way that others can't you don't have to turn there first Corinthians 12 6 says new diversities of operations well worshiping the Holy Ghost is a new diversity of operations well who gets operated on you do mostly mm -hmm. think of all the things that happen a lot of us 
are familiar with this now because we've been worshiping the Holy Ghost for a while but think of all the things that begin to change and transform in you and in your mind when you begin worshiping the Holy Ghost things change they just change and you change and you're transformed into his image now the Lord is that spirit where the Spirit of the Lord is or where the Spirit is Lord there is liberty and you're changed from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord when is when is this happening when you're worshiping the Holy Ghost he changes you it's a diversity of operation what do you mean diversity it means it's different than other operations it's a thing you do worshiping God the Holy Ghost that is different than the other things you do when you worship the Holy Ghost it does something different it has a different effect so Hebrews chapter 5 are you getting any of this it should make you want to worship the Holy Ghost more now we've got a lot of messages on that online you can find it so Hebrews chapter 5 do you find it yeah. let's look at down at verse 11 of whom I have many things to say yet hard to be uttered seeing you are what dull of hearing it's difficult to say some things because people are dull of hearing what are the reasons people get dull of hearing N not going forward shutting their ears or hearing something listen hearing something and not doing it over and over will cause your it'll cause you to get calloused and when people wonder you know why is God not talking to me because the last four things he told you you didn't do Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11 of whom I have many things to say hard to be uttered seeing you are dull of hearing meaning it affected the way he was able to say something of whom I have many things to say hard to be uttered seeing they're dull of hearing for when the time you ought to be teachers you have need that one teach you again say again again, again means they've heard it once they didn't do it guess what happened they got dull of hearing you don't want to be dull of hearing you want to be able to hear God it's where your prosperity lies when the time they ought to be teachers they had needed one teach them again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become say become become, become such as have need of milk and not strong meat for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is when I say the word of righteousness what do you think you should automatically think the word of righteousness what should you be thinking when somebody says the word of righteousness speaking the word of righteousness the word of righteousness is by saying God's word you understand that look at this it says everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness or using the words of righteousness for he is a baby I looked up this word you know baby means non-speaker he's a non-speaker he didn't begin saying a preacher could tell them you got to say this you got to say it it's where it begins are you here and because they didn't they went backward they became wah say they became wah right you want to become that when you feel foolish you want to greet yourself to somebody and the only thing that comes out is wah a lot of times that's what we hear people that are walking in faith and following God and are expecting more out of you than maybe somebody else right and all you do is spit up on them again but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age Woo! even those who have by reason of use they practiced their faith they did what God told them to do and then they grew are you here by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil chapter 6 verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on and we know that doesn't mean we're just gonna leave them and go do something else it means we're gonna build on that and go farther yes. right let us go on unto perfection the good acceptable perfect will of God there's a progression that we have to go on let us go on to perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God doc doctrine of baptisms laying on of hands resurrection to the dead and of eternal judgment but this we will do if God permits see you have to be willing to do it first you got to be willing to go on I'm not willing to go on and I don't want to hear anything you say 
well this message I'm talking about is going on people that worship the Holy Ghost are going on this we will do if God permit for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost say partakers or partners of the Holy Ghost you understand you have the Holy Ghost you walk with him you have a knowledge of him that a lot of people don't have I'm really trying to take us somewhere you understand we, we should be here we shouldn't have to go back to some other place we're gonna go from here on it begins here Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and verse 5 he's there and have tasted let's go back to verse uh, 3 again we're made partakers of the Holy Ghost verse 5 and have tasted the good word of God can you really taste the good word of God if you haven't been made a partaker of the Holy Ghost no no because he's the one who quickens it to you he causes you to understand it partakers of the Holy Ghost tasted the good word of God and is there an and in your Bible yeah. and the powers of the world to come does that sound like going on yes. going on to what the powers say the powers of the world to come what are we going on to just these elementary powers that are around here the work of our hands the might of our own strength the thoughts of our head no we're going on to partake of and participate in and use the powers of the world to come and this we will do if God permits now I've preached on this at all yes. I have whole series I got a whole series on you know the powers of the world to come the crossover powers mm -hmm. and I've told you that worshiping the Holy Ghost is a power of the world to come it opens up the powers of the world to come to you and then I've been preaching a lot on youth renewal is youth renewal a power of the world to come yes, yes. yes. and why don't you hear this much in any other circles because they're not worshiping the Holy Ghost they don't have access to these things that we're going on to you begin worshiping the Holy Ghost he begins to enlighten you and show you things powers of the world to come is youth renewal the power of the world to come yes. whole other message I've been preaching on it over and over and over again I'm gonna keep preaching on it what do you think they have in heaven their youth is renewed it is one of the fundamental powers of the world to come another word for that is everlasting life right it's something heavens powered by everlasting life and everlasting life in your body is youth renewal say this I receive, I receive everlasting life everlasting into my physical body and I call my youth renewed it is a power of the world to come where did you get that from the room of Holy Ghost worship you should be very glad you should be very happy and you should be uh, excited to be a part of this See, a lot of people aren't but a lot of people don't pay the price to get here now we're talking about end time manifestations that these things are being revealed in the last days to people who are going on can you see the connection be the, the partakers of the Holy Ghost the good Word of God that they're tasting and the powers of the world to come see the connection yes. I hope so where does that where's the good Word of God come through the Holy Ghost where are the powers of the world to come come from the Holy Ghost and he reveals them to people who are going on are you getting this mm -hmm. so we know that youth renewal the substance of everlasting life is a power of the world to come mm -hmm. is it in heaven that's all you got to do to ask yourself if 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 everlasting life is in heaven and youth renewal is in heaven then it is a power of the world to come that's the world to come yeah. does this make sense mm -hmm. yeah. and we know that we reap everlasting life the Bible says in Galatians 6 8 if you sow to the Spirit you of the Spirit reap everlasting life where are we gonna reap the everlasting life from the power of the world to come oh who we reap everlasting life from the Holy Ghost are you here what if I worship the Holy Ghost what am I gonna reap he says if you sow to the Spirit you're going to reap everlasting life now people don't know that it's a power of the world to come because they've been blinded or their ears are dull so youth renewal is a power of the world to come guess what else is a power of the world to come no lack now I began talking about no lack last week say no lack, no lack. 
say no lack no. is a power, a power of the world to come does anyone in heaven have any lack no. now people may have all kinds of different things right various levels of prosperity can you understand that yes. we're not all it's not communism we go up there and we're all handed out our you know our olive green jumpsuit and we start sweeping the floor it's not communism or socialism by the way right. we're all given rewards based on what we've been able to do down here this is exciting mm -hmm. so what should that tell you then I should be productive down here because yeah. then up there I have a larger reward that lasts a long time mm -hmm. forever is a long time but it begins with no lack it does anyone in heaven have lack no, no lack is a thing that's in heaven mm -hmm. there's no lack in heaven say there's no lack, there's no no lack. In, heaven. in heaven and no lack is a thing yeah. it's something everybody has now you can have prosperity in greater degrees on top of that but everybody gets no lack I don't lack are you here yes I'm gonna take you through this hope you're excited about it sickness can't touch youth renewal it can't touch it is there any sickness in heaven no, no. and youth renewal quickens people to where sickness can't touch them poverty can't touch no lack it's on a different plane it can't go there poverty might try to touch no lack but it can't if you have no lack poverty's a thing of the past mm -hmm. are you here yes. no lack is a power of the world to come do you think that's something we can experience here mm -hmm. is it something we should receive here is it something the Holy Ghost is going to reveal to us even tonight here the power say the power, the power. of no lack. no lack it's actually a thing Bible says we can taste and experience the powers of the world to come no lack is a power of the world to come first John let's look at verse 5 and this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is something light God is light this is what we're declaring unto you God is light and in him is no darkness at all say no, no. Darkness. darkness and you understand I've preached on this many times also that this is a function of holiness mm -hmm. holiness is purity in its purest state if God is light there can be no darkness in there or it wouldn't be holiness of light mm -hmm. prosperity in heaven has to exist without poverty without lack yes. say no lack, no no lack. That's the holiness of prosperity, no lack. Mm -hmm. The holiness of light is no darkness. What's the holiness of health? No sickness. That's holiness. Say that's holiness. Well, that's holiness. And who's the God that we serve and worship in the earth? Holy Ghost. Wouldn't it be amazing that He would receive would reveal holiness to you? No lack is holiness say that no lack, no lack. Is, holiness. is holiness how do you how do you mean brother because no lack has no lack mm. just like God is light and in there's no darkness at all no lack has no lack in, are you seeing this yes. zero lack mm. holiness is the absence of things you get to heaven heaven's holy what's not there the devil right holiness is the absence of the devil holiness is the absence of sickness holiness number one is the absence of sin you understand that if sin is gone what's left holiness if lack is gone what's left holiness Holy Ghost are you getting this you worship the Holy Ghost he begins to show you powers of the world to come all of the powers of the world to come are holiness I mean there's no poverty in it there's no sickness in it there's no sin in it and there's obviously no devils in it holiness are you getting this yes. Holy Ghost who do you worship some other ghost uh, Casper the friendly no Holy Ghost 
and when he reveals himself to you takes you from glory to glory he gets rid of things holiness is the absence of things you getting any of this yeah. I hope so so I worship you Holy Ghost introduces you to the absence of things the powers of the world to come automatically have the absence of certain things are you here holiness is the absence of things it is no thing no thing you bring when people lose their sins what are they into now holiness they have no thing the thing being are you here yes no thing is a thing mm -hmm. I realize this might seem cute and a play on words but it's not if you think it's just cute then it's it you're not you're not getting it yet and I will keep going until you get it you understand no thing is an actual thing it's holiness it's what exists in heaven the blessing of no lack listen the blessing of no lack think of that being blessed with no lack say I'm blessed, I'm blessed with no lack, with no lack. you're being black you're being blessed with a no thing do you understand mm -hmm. you're being blessed with a holiness it's a thing it comes on you it's a thing that comes on you are you here yes. this is a big deal a lot of people are missing it here and I understand we say abundance and no lack we call for abundance but abundance is not holiness no lack is no lack is a power of the world to come uh, Deuteronomy 8 7 through 10 says I'm gonna bring you into a land a good land in which there will be no lack what's in the land no lack it's a thing he brought you into a land and we can talk about coming into the land of worshiping the Holy Ghost I worship the Holy Ghost he brings you into a space into a land where there is a thing called no lack say I have, I have. No, lack. no lack it is a thing say it is a thing, is a thing. say it's a power, it's a power of the world to come, world to come. And, I and I have it now no lack is the perfect will of God it's a heavenly substance where does that perfect will of God exist it exists in heaven it exists in the Holy Ghost it is something that he gives you it's called no lack it's a thing it's a power of the world to come it's also a promise and I'm gonna take you to a few of those promises tonight would it be good to have no lack yes. yeah what is it it's a power of the world to come who does it come by the Holy Ghost it is something that comes on you it's not abundance it's not healing you can have healing without no sickness what do you mean by that well the no, no sickness being a holiness under the Lord right you can have healing without no sickness no sickness being you have no sickness what if I got healed and my hand was healed but I still had a runny nose I got healing but I didn't have no sickness you can't have no sickness without it including healing just making sense I'm trying to show you that there's where this is a power of the world to come it supersedes all of these other things God isn't going around healing everybody in heaven it just doesn't exist there because they have youth renewal mm -hmm. same thing with prosperity you can have prosperity without no lack do people have prosperity and still have lack mm -hmm. yeah we can all think of situations that where that could be well I, I got blessed I got prospered here but I still lacked something over here right mm -hmm. but you can't have no lack without it including prosperity Is this making sense mm -hmm. it's not the same thing and this is the this, this is the hair I'm trying to split because it is a different power of God it is a power of the world to come called no lack are you getting this I think you are does that mean you you no longer believe and and believing for prosperity are you kidding me no lack includes prosperity it's a higher power it's a power of the world to come it is a holiness so in heaven we also understand there are different levels of prosperity but everybody has no lack that is the base substance which everybody has no lack 
let's try to get this point across imagine an island called no lack island they go to this island and nobody lacks there's no lack on no lack island everybody has no lack now they all might have different size houses but everybody there has no lack they don't lack anything mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 8 verse 7 for the Lord thy God now who would that be applying to us today the Holy, Ghost. Holy Ghost the Lord thy God brings thee into a good land verse 9 a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness thou shalt not lack anything in it did God say this yes. is this a promise mm -hmm. then it must be a thing no lack is the standard no lack is the control in scientific speak mm -hmm. right no lack is the constant the unchanging standard for everybody that came into that land there should be no lack what land well the land I'm talking about in this day is the land of Holy Ghost worship where you're worshiping the Holy Ghost no lack Deuteronomy 28 13 says above only and not beneath why would that not beneath the no lack that's the constant that's the standard that's where everybody starts and goes from second Corinthians 2 14 says always causes me to triumph except for the times when you failed no always means always you getting this yes. no lack are these promises of God yes. are all the promises of God yes and amen are all the promises of God things things that he does they're things mm -hmm. they're actual things Psalms 34 verse 9 oh fear the Lord in our day Holy Ghost oh fear the Lord you his saints for there is they is. is there's a thing that exists there is no want to them that fear him now the fear here we know could include and certainly would include worship oh worship the Lord worship the Holy Ghost you his saints for there is what have I been talking about no want it's also translated no lack in in, in other verses it's the same word no want no lack mm -hmm. what is there in Holy Ghost worship no lack the no thing called no lack it is a power of the world to come are you here yes. is this a scripture mm -hmm. in him in worshiping him there is a thing called no lack yes. it's a substance it's a power it's a thing and it is in worshiping him second Corinthians 1 20 says all the promises of God are yes and amen and all the promises of God are things so no thing lacking no thing or no want is a thing I'm trying to hammer this home that no lack is a is a thing it's a power a substance of the world to come and we receive it through worshiping the Holy Ghost are you getting this yes. it's a thing no lack is a thing no want is a thing the heavenly substance it's a holiness imagine that you're worshiping the Holy Ghost and he begins to reveal to you things that are his that he keeps close to the chest mm -hmm. you ever heard that he doesn't share with everybody why is that because they're precious to him everlasting life youth renewal power of the world to come no lack power of the world to come first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the things that are wise God hath chosen say God hath chosen, God hath chosen. so we're talking about what God chose not what you choose God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the things that are wise God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty you see uh, what's going on here and verse 28 and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen yea and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are now who chose this method God chose a method by taking something that isn't to bring to naught things that are no lack is a thing that isn't 
it's a thing he said he brings the things that are not no lack is a thing that are not it is not it is not lack are you here God is using not lack no lack is a thing God is using a thing that is not to bring to not the thing that is what what's the thing that is lack lack is the thing that is God is using a thing no lack to bring to not the thing that is he's using the power of the world to come called no lack to bring to not the lack is this making sense I don't know how many more ways I can say it but this is the, he's using the power of something that is not no lack is a thing that is not it's a thing it is not God has chosen this thing that is not to bring to not the lack now wouldn't that be good news if you had some lack in your life you know you'd be one of you yell at me about you know going on and on about something well hang on here buddy old pal because if you have lack you need the thing that God is going to use to get rid of the thing that is mm -hmm. the thing that is is lack he's gonna use no lack to get rid of it what is no lack it's a power that God has a power of the world to come mm -hmm. are you here yes. the power of no lack say this the power of no lack comes on me and destroys lack are you seeing this you should try to preach this message God hath chosen this is what God chose he chose this to use something that is not meaning no lack you understand and no lack I'm gonna use that thing no lack to bring to not the lack it's not the same as abundance he didn't choose to bring a thing that is he chose to bring a thing that is not to bring to not the thing Are you getting this he didn't say abundance he shall have more abundance we understand that there are other verses of scripture you can have abundance and still have lack but he chose to use the thing that isn't no lack to bring to not the lack that is are you here and one of these reasons I'll just show this in chapter 2 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 says how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of the world that come to naught he's gonna use something that isn't to bring to naught the things that are coming to naught are you here God's gonna use something that isn't to bring to naught the power of the devil no lack destroys the power of lack no lack destroys the power of the devil and God can then say I've destroyed you devil with nothing say lack, lack is, destroyed is destroyed in my life, in my life. With, the with the power of nothing, of nothing. no thing yeah. are you here yeah. you see in this God chose this method I didn't choose it I would have picked something a little more obvious right mm -hmm. but he chose no lack as a thing to put on people that will destroy lack out of their life is this any good not easy to get here but none of these things are you got to pay the price you got to worship the Holy Ghost he begins to reveal things to you right yes. I beat you with no thing God still beat him with nothing all right so Luke 11 and then uh, look at verse 2 and he said unto them when you pray say right so when you pray you ought to be saying something our father which is in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done as in heaven so in earth now God doesn't have two separate wills he doesn't have one will for you while you're here right so his will is still no lack for you here and if you're gonna pray his will on earth as it is in heaven what are you gonna pray when you say there's no lack in heaven you understand that 
then you're gonna say there's no lack mm -hmm. it's part of what you're doing when you're praying you're gonna say no lack does it matter did God choose this method mm -hmm. saying yep. no lack mm -hmm. destroys lack mm -hmm. Psalms 23 verse 1 the Lord is my shepherd I shall have abundance it's the first thing it's literally the first verse of Psalms 23 the Lord is my shepherd Holy Ghost shepherds us right I shall not want is it a promise is that a thing is that something that comes on you yes it's a blessing that comes on you that destroys the lack mm -hmm. destroys the one is this making sense the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds what no sorrow, no sorrow. you can be really joyful and still have some sorrow mm -hmm. but you can't have no sorrow and not be full of joy right. are you getting this no right. sorrow what did he say when you get to heaven He'll wipe away your tears you won't have any sorrow it's a thing it's a power of the world and it's what I'm trying to get across to you calling for the powers of the world to come destroys the things that are mm -hmm. now in Deuteronomy 8 verse 9 it says you shall have no lack remember it was a command he said thou shall not lack did God say thou shalt not lack yes. so what are you gonna do to walk with God you're gonna say the same thing remember Amos 3 3 how can two walk together except they say the same thing we're gonna be walking in powers of the world to come Do you understand that youth renewal is one no lack is another by hearing tonight mm -hmm. what has come to you no lack is listen no lack is coming to you it's right here it's right now you just need to receive it and declare it say no lack no I call you come to me rest on me be on me I declare that no lack is mine and I walk in it in the earth and I please you Holy Ghost